Welcome to this week's tech tip where we'll take a look at the CPL marker functionality. The first thing we'll look at is how the CPL marker serves as a very precise method for manipulating the view of the workspace. If we left click and drag on an axis handle, we can see that our panning is locked to the selected axis. And if we'd like to rotate the view, we can use one of the rotational handles to spin the part around a single axis. The next thing we'll look at is how we can use the CPL marker to easily create new custom CPLs for our required datum positions. The first CPL we create will be for the highlighted feature you see here. If we click and drag the sphere at the base of the CPL marker, you'll notice that a second instance of the marker is created. And when we drag the new CPL marker over the different faces of our model, we can see that the z-axis automatically adjusts to match the orientation of the underlying feature. We can also automatically snap the new CPL to any of the locations displayed on the model. We'll place the CPL for this feature in the lower corner here. Once the CPL is placed on the model, it can be realigned or relocated quite easily. For the CPL that we just created, both the z-axis and the origin are correct. However, the x and y-axis are not aligned correctly for our setup. In order to change the orientation of the x-y-axis at this point, we can simply grab the rotational handle for the z-axis and rotate the CPL to the correct alignment. Or if we happen to know the angle that we need to rotate it by, we can enter it in the offset value here. For this example though, we'll click on the arrow of the axis that we'd like to align, and then following the prompt, click on the surface that we wish to align it to. With the CPL set, we'll name it G55 and select Done. We can see that the new CPL has been placed on our model, and that it's now the active CPL for the current session. Next, we'll create another CPL for the angled face here. Again, we'll grab the CPL marker to create a new CPL and move the CPL over the angled surface to set the z-axis. With the CPL now placed, we can correct the alignment using the z-axis rotational handle. The location of the CPL can be adjusted in much the same ways as the alignment. We can slide the CPL along a single axis using one of the adjustment handles. We can also click on an axis and enter a value in the offset field to shift the CPL by a specific amount. Or as in this case, we can select the CPL's origin and then following the prompt, select the point that we'd like to relocate the CPL to. With the new CPL aligned and located correctly, we'll name it G56 and select Done. As you can see from the examples here, the CPL marker allows for precise navigation of the workspace view, as well as providing a powerful solution for creating custom CPLs. As always, we hope you found this tech tip helpful. And until next time, stay productive.